If you're seeing spots, that's okay. You see, spots can be beautiful. They're all around us in the natural world. They accentuate grace. And if you're looking in the right place, you might even find a spotted face looking right back at you. Everywhere you look, spots are being used as camouflage in the natural world. And tortoises are no exception. Today we're hanging out with one of my favorite species of tortoises, the leopard tortoise. Now these guys are fun, personable, they don't get too big, and they make great and rewarding pets if you know what you're doing and you can provide them with the right habitat. Well today, I'm going to tell you what that is. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. Oh, this is what I really love to see. I, I love putting the food out because these tortoises are so receptive to me and, and that's what makes me so excited to work with them or to have them as pets or to be their caretaker. They have a lot of personality and they really get to know their keepers. Um, these are the Stigmachelius pardalis babcocci. Now there are two species or subspecies that were formally recognized by scientists. There's Stigmachelius pardalis babcocci, which is this subspecies, and then there is Stigmachelius pardalis pardalis. Now, there's some debate whether or not they are in fact subspecific or whether or not they are in fact just one species. So, from now on, we're just gonna say all leopard tortoises are leopard tortoises. There are some from certain locales that can grow quite large. I'm talking close to 100 pounds. Uh, but those are very rare, rarely seen in the United States in captivity. Now, in the late 1990s, all importation of leopard tortoise and sulcata tortoise was stopped into the United States. So now the only way you can get a leopard tortoise hatchling is if it was uh, it was hatched in captivity here in the United States. We do not import any of these animals anymore and I think that's a good thing. And the reason they stopped doing that was because wild caught animals had a tick on it that could make our cattle sick. So they just shut down the importation on the sulcata and the leopard tortoise. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk to you a bit about what these animals eat. And you can kind of see right here, oh, there's what one's eating right now. This is a female. She was eating a little bit of cactus and some Missouri tortoise diet. And I have that on a, on a nice little uh, bed of hay. Now they don't like when they get picked up, especially when they're eating. Uh, but they are true grassland animals. Um, Unfortunately for them, they've eaten all the grass, so I've got to replant. So you've caught me in between where the lawn is a little bald. Uh, sorry about that, but we're gonna go ahead and get that underway. It's been so hot, it's hard to grow grass. So I have to feed them on this bed of hay. This is Timothy and alfalfa hay, and they really love it. I'm gonna put this animal down. By the way, this is a female, and if you're looking to know the difference between a male and a female leopard tortoise, just like any other tortoise, flat plaster on, little tail is gonna be a female. And then, oh, we'll get a male here. Look at that, curved plastron and large tail is gonna be the male. So here they are right now doing their thing when they start out, they're little guys. Uh, these are not burrowers, uh, which in, for some people, they can be very good pets because they don't get too large, they don't burrow. Um, a lot of people like that. They of course have that very attractive shell, uh, which gives them their name. Uh, the leopard tortoise, you know, as far as care, you want to raise them up just like any other young tortoise. You're going to soak them twice a week. You're going to make sure they have shelter, fresh water at all times. They have a water dish back there that they soak in. Uh, these guys, where they differ from sulcatas uh, as far as care, is you have to be a little bit more careful how wet these guys get. Um, I don't let these guys stay out if we're going to have day in and day out of rain. Um, it's just something that 
seems to affect them and gets them sick. Also, you want to make sure that you don't mix this species with any other species. You'll hear some people put them in with sulcatas, but the sulcatas are going to get much larger than them and they can bully them and that stress can also cause some uh, sickness to occur. So I like to keep my species of leopards only with leopards. I tend to do that with most of my tortoises. They're either, they're going to be kept within the species requirements. So. That's what I love about these animals, and as you can see, they're real friendly, they eat weeds, they eat everything, they come to you. Um, you've seen in past videos, I've planted out this enclosure, it's got all kinds of cactus, elephant grass, hibiscus leaves, so these animals have plenty to browse on. Uh, and the thing that I notice about them is more than the sulcatas, like you can see the sulcata enclosures just behind you, there's still grass there. But with these guys, if you don't have enough grass, they're just going to eat it completely to the ground. So that's why I supplement their diet right now during this time of the year, so I can keep them going. They will, for me, breed in the late spring and start laying their eggs all throughout the summer. Uh, the typical size clutch is about five eggs, and then it takes about four to five months for these to hatch. And when they hatch, they're just little guys that need a lot of the same care as the adults, but just shrunken down a little bit. So here you have the leopard tortoise. It is hot today. These guys are loving it. They're very diurnal also. Uh, these guys are out more uh, in midday than some of the other tortoises, and it's pretty interesting uh, little species here. And this, this actually acts as a camouflage. If they're up in their fountain grass, when you look down with all the different uh, shading of light, this pattern really breaks up their shell and helps them blend into the tall grasses from where they're from. So there are my leopard tortoises. Fantastic species, doesn't get too big, eats a lot of the grays, and uh, make a very rewarding pet if you can house them correctly. Outdoors is always the best, so try and get your animal outdoors as much as possible. And if you keep them indoors, make sure you got the proper UVB light. All right, folks, we're gonna let these guys finish up. I'm out of here, it's hot. Thanks for watching, guys. If you wanna learn more about the care and conservation of other types of animals and reptiles, be sure to check out all the Camp Kennan feature episodes. And don't forget to subscribe so you can join me on each and every adventure this season on Camp Kennan. See you next time.